syncing all cameras. Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct views of Sam I B. Began G doing political commentary for the media speaks. And I want to thank you all for all of the shares and all of the views between the three sites, the media speaks, Facebook, and my page. I want to thank you guys very much um, for sharing. I've been getting donations, uh, donations from the uh, which you can do at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. And uh, we keep our promises at this show. So I'd like to give a shout out to Melissa Ricciardi. She is a supporter of the show. Now, I don't know what her favorite charity is. I had promised to plug her favorite charity, Paula Corey Cindy. Hello. I had promised to plug her favorite charity, but I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to plug her. She was nice enough to donate to the show. And friends, that brings us into the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And, uh, you know, the runners up this year are really big. I really want to address this ridiculous meme that I've been seeing. I'm going to screen share it for my friends here on YouTube. And the rest of you can find it. If you're on Facebook, you can find it right away because it's on, it's on my page. I've been answering questions pertaining to it. This ridiculous notion that Jesus was a refugee. Okay, this is mind-blowingly dumb. Let me call this up here real quick. How many of you know that Jesus Christ, the reason why his family was being taken, why his family was stuck sleeping in an inn? I will let you know why. Because the government decided they wanted a census, which was tied into the taxes. So the liberals, if you will, of that time were the ones who put together this ill-fated, ridiculous census. And if you wish to know why I'm calling it an ill-fated, ridiculous census, it's because the government did not take the time to understand there wasn't enough places for people to stay. There wasn't. There wasn't enough the, the, not only wasn't there room at the inn for, for Jesus and Mary, but it's very likely that many, many people had it far, far worse than Jesus and Mary did. The idea that the innkeeper was this terrible person probably is not true. The meme says, uh, if Donald Trump had seen, if I wonder if Donald Dump would hold these people up at the border. Now, Again, it's a picture of the Holy Family. Let me ask you something. How many of you realize that there were a lot of people that had no place to stay that night? The innkeeper, most likely the innkeeper had his family stay uh, stashed in his quarters. And I imagine it looked a lot like the, the, the people sleeping at the airport after, um, after flights are canceled. And there's simply no room for anybody. The innkeeper most likely did the family a favor by even giving them the 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 uh, manger, the the stall, the barn, whatever you want to call it. And let me tell you something else: they probably paid for it. There's this notion that Mary and Joseph were dirt poor. It was almost impossible to work in carpentry or to work in masonry at that time and be dirt poor. Furthermore, they probably paid for the accommodations that they had in the state. They also weren't poor when they left because the shepherds gave them frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Okay, it probably wasn't just a little bit of gold or it wouldn't have been mentioned. They gave the family gold. And it says later on in the Bible that Christ had become poor for their sake. You do not become poor if you're already poor. So please stop. That's the first of the dunce cap of the month. Hopefully we, we've put this to rest now. Can we please stop with this idea that Jesus was this poor refugee? The only reason he was in the desert at the time that he was born was because his government drug him there. That is what bad leadership brings. Now that that has been addressed, uh, let's go to the smoking gun. Mom charged after son 10 gets tattooed. Now, 
This is where I think the government needs to get the hell out of parents' lives. At what point? I know a lot of people are going to say you shouldn't get a tattoo at 10. You're always going to regret it. Maybe you will and maybe you won't. The people told me that when I got my old band tattooed on my ankle. I still look at it fondly as, you know, a period of time that I greatly enjoyed. It was like a snapshot. The bigger point is, I don't want to get into a discussion as to whether or not children should have tattoos. That's that's going to go nowhere. But I would like to at least address the fact, like the woman's crying here, the prettiest green eyes ever. She's like crying here. It doesn't make any sense. Listen to this. An Ohio woman was that allowed who allowed her 10-year-old son to get a tattoo from an unlicensed teenager has been charged with child endangerment. Now, I understand the unlicensed part, but at what point can we not tie up the courts with all this? Okay, maybe you definitely need to be alerted to the risks there because anytime you do something like that and it's not from a reputable tattoo artist, you're opening the door for all kinds of trouble. I get it. But child endangerment, dragging this lady to court, do you understand that that's why everything is so expensive? That's one of the ways that the, the complex keeps getting richer and richer. Our controllers keep getting more and more rights over us. Do you realize it's the petty stuff like this? Because there's like a symphony of people. That, oh, crucify her. Yeah, because I'm sure she deliberately set out to harm her kid. Nikki Dixon, 34, was named yesterday in a misdemeanor criminal complaint filed in municipal court in Belafonte, a city about 50 miles northwest of Columbus. We're going to get to Columbus in a minute. That ties in to our Dundee of the day, our Dunce Cap of the month. Uh, local police learned of the child's tattooing after video of the inking was uploaded on Facebook. The criminal complaint sworn by Belafonte police officer alleged that the tattooing took place inside a residence amid unsanitary conditions. And of course, Big Brother has to get involved in every aspect of our lives and tie us up in court and make everything more expensive for everybody because a mother made a mistake. While Dickinson recorded with her phone, the 16-year-old tattoo artist inked the child's right arm. The complaint does not indicate what was tattooed on the child. During police questioning, uh, the parent reportedly said that she got tired of her son Skylar asking, so she allowed him to get a tattoo on September 24th, a week after he turned 10. So it was probably a big deal for him, something he really, really wanted. I'm looking at what's being tattooed here. It doesn't look like it was very big. Uh, he's sitting on her lap. He is smiling. And they could get an MSR, and how do they get a MRSA infection? I get it. I understand how bad it is to get a tattoo from a to get a tattoo unlicensed. But I, my, my bigger point here is that parents are not even allowed to make decisions anymore. They're not allowed to make mistakes anymore. Any error you make, your kid could be whisked off to God only knows where. And I think that that's a slippery slope. I'd like to know what some other some others of you think on this. I'm not going to spend forever on it. Because we have even dumber stories to get to. I know it sounds impossible, but it's true. Um, how many of you heard about the bank robbery prank? Yeah. A woman in Florida, according to the smoking gun, had said that there was a bank robbery game that she was playing, but that she wasn't really robbing the bank. Now, how many of you think that this went well? <laughs> I told the dunce cat, and they get worse. I swear to God, they, they get worse um, as we go. Florida woman ends up behind bars after robbery prank backfires. While dining Saturday at the Florida cafe, Peggy Georges thought it would be funny to send her boyfriend a text falsely claiming that people were robbing the restaurant. I'm sorry, I said bank. My fault. Many I, live the errors that happen live. Uh, George's 22 did not anticipate when planning her prank that her beau would call 911 to report that an armed robbery was in progress at Alabon Bakery and Fort Pierce Eatery, specializing in Haitian cooking. After receiving the 911 call, cops raced to the restaurant running red lights with their sirens blaring. With their weapons drawn, officers subsequently entered the business and discovered that no crime was in progress. Oh, oops! Uh, when they find, when they did find Georges, who explained that she texted her boyfriend as a prank that people were robbing the restaurant, I guess they weren't amused. 
She created a dangerous environment that could have resulted in harm. Yeah, because if we've seen instances where flash grenades have gone off in innocent people's homes when they were swatting, when that SWAT team was called on them for absolutely no reason at all. And if you think that's dumb, friends, don't worry. We get dumber. We get dumber and dumber and dumber. Uh, let me go to this last one here. There's, we got two left, but th this just can't be uh, glossed over. So I, I want to make sure I get the, uh, the correct. There it is. Now, how many of you know that there are ways that you can get around the system? You can, get a, you can commit a crime. You can pull it off. Sometimes you have to, because let's face it, the law puts ridiculous demands on people. Maybe you decided to get your 10-year-old tattooed, and for whatever reason, now you're in jail. You have to get around certain things that the law does to you, because sometimes the law is simply corrupt or too heavy-handed. All right, now, if you get away with something, how many of you think that it would be a wise idea to post it on the Internet? This is the runner-up. For Dunce Cap of the Month. Uh, the next next story won it. You'll see why. But this one right here it, it was, a, was a strong runner-up. Springfield, Missouri. A Missouri man is charged with a felony after he allegedly filmed himself removing an ankle monitor and then posting the video on Facebook. 33-year-old Dustin Burns of Springfield was charged last week with tampering with electronic monitoring equipment. The video shows someone using a butter knife and a screwdriver to remove an ankle monitor. The man advises viewers to remove the ankle monitor without damaging it to avoid hefty fines. So, I mean, he kind of knew what he was doing, except for the fact that he felt the need to brag. And let's remember, pride is the devil's favorite sin. We all learned that, didn't we? Well, <laughs> The Springfield News and Leader reports uh, court records show Burns pleaded guilty to violating a restraining order earlier this year and was placed on probation. Again, maybe he was justified in being where he was. Maybe the law was wrong. However, his level of stupidity here simply goes off the charts. Court records show warrants were issued this summer after several probation violations were fired against Burns. He was charged in the Greenlee County Jail and has been there since uh, August 28th. He does not have an attorney listed in records. No, why would he need an attorney? He's so brilliant. He can pull that off himself. And friends, I want to remind you before we get to the dunce cap of the month, which is, of course, the story that you are waiting for, the dumbest story of the month, I want to remind you one more time that this is entirely listener-supported. Uh, YouTube has demonetized us, uh, made it impossible for anyone here to make money by posting videos and letting ads come in because we do pro political commentary and they want the liberal mainstream media to have a uh, monopoly on that. So if you want to support me, if you want to support what I do, if you want to make sure these dunce caps, like the one here that you're going to get to see, if you want to make sure that these dunce caps are mailed out and uh, the show continues to get better and better, then by all means donate. If you donated to help keep the studio open, uh, you notice I'm in my living room. My home is still being remodeled, the place that I'm renting, so it's not, not due to anything there. And friends, that brings us to, let's get the music ready. Dunce Cap of the Month, the stupidest story of the month. And that, of course, without reservation, goes to the mayor of Columbus. Friends, wait until you hear this stupid story. And then I'm going to follow it up with some facts about Christopher Columbus, who is a, a, a point of this story, as you will see, that many of you did not know. First, for the first time, Columbus, Ohio, will not observe Columbus Day. They didn't. It's namesake holiday. The city of Columbus, Ohio, will not observe the controvers controversial federal holiday honoring its namesake, Italian explorer Christopher Columbus, for the first time this year. City officials who have won the Dunce Cap of the Month are instead scheduled to close on Veterans Day in November, though a spokesman for the mayor's office said that the decision was not spurred by movements to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day, a counter-celebration held on the same day to commemorate Native Americans. Now, this is where I want to pause for a moment. One of the facts I want to get to here that a lot of people may not know is that Christopher Columbus did not did not, did not do anything to facilitate stealing land from the Indians. 
Other people may have done so later. That's that's historical fact. Christopher Columbus had nothing to do with it. He got it. He had heard from other travelers that there were indigenous people who had not heard the word of Christ, had not heard the gospel, and he wanted to bring that to them. So he, um, he thought, that, of course, that they were Indians. We all know that, like Indians as in India. And he did exactly what he thought was best. He tried to teach the Indians, and the rest, of course, is history. It was abused, uh, many people. But that was not the fault of Christopher Columbus, my bigger point here. So that, that there is a mistelling of history to begin with. Critics say the holiday honors a mass genocide and colonization of Native Americans, of which Christopher Columbus had nothing to do with. Uh, these were people, of course, who lived in the Americas before Columbus arrived in October of 1492. While Italian-American organizations say that the movement comes at the expense and time to celebrate their ethnic heritage. Of course it's an attack. It's an attack, though, not on Italians, and I am part Italian, obviously, but it's an attack on American culture and what it means to be American. Blaming the white man, who isn't even white, he was Italian, blaming the white man for this is somehow justified. When you have to put this into proper perspective, um, if you believe the lie that uh, Christopher Columbus was the reason that he, that he came here and started slaughtering people, then let me put this into perspective. And I'm not in favor of this. Let's say you're going to go into a black neighborhood where it is very obvious that there is gang violence, drug sales, whatever, whatever your favorite gang vice is. Now, you and 50, 60 people are going to go there and start hollering racial slurs and killing people. You would last about 30 seconds to a minute before you were given a boot party the likes of which you would never forget, and you may not make it out of said neighborhood. So you mean to tell me that the settlers, after, after enduring scurvy and many of them dying at sea just to get there, they arrive in a weakened state, and the first thing they do is start killing the indigenous people there. And of course, the Indians did nothing to fight back. They allowed a very small number of exhausted colonialists to come into the country and take them over. That did not happen. Or go, Christopher Columbus is not the one you're after. It may have happened far later, but attacking Christopher Columbus has nothing to do with actual history. Okay, he, he was lost. Clearly, he thought he was in India. He, but he was also one of the first people to uh, know how big the ocean was prior to having sailed the whole thing. Okay, you could also argue the Vikings. I get it. On a different culture, they had not communicated. Yes, the Vikings also did so. Ohio's capital city, the USA Today says, is the most populated city named after Columbus with 860,000 people, according to the 2016 census. The city, however, lacks the funding to give its 8,500 employees both Veterans Day and Columbus Day off, said Robin Davis, a spokesman for Mayor Andrew Ginther. So now, if that's to be believed, we employees, not even we, but those who work for the government now don't even get government holidays off anymore. Wouldn't that also be a, an attack on the culture? Because you've got to remember, America has less holidays than most other nations. I'm not suggesting that we should be like North Korea or like some Muslim nations that have so many holidays they can't get any work done. I don't think that that's a great idea. But suffice to say that we have a very low number of holidays here. And now, oh, we just couldn't afford to give our workers the day off, really. If you believe that, you know I got some interesting land to sell you. As we celebrate this tremendous strides our nation has made since the arrival, since his arrival, Columbus, we acknowledge the important contributions. Again, they're trying, trying to, to downplay this here the important contributions that Italian-Americans made to the country's culture, business, and civic cycle, according to the proclamation. Even though uh, former President Barack Obama and Bill Clinton have both, uh, and, you know, even, even they were leery about it in the past. Uh, President Trump did not even mention Native Americans. 
Romans. And it says we must never forget these dark chapters and we must continue to strengthen tribal sovereignty according to a statement from Native American Heritage Month. Now listen, if, if there are certain pilgrims that you have a problem with, I can understand that. And again, I've said for a long time that the answer to this is to set, a, let's say you have a General Lee statue. Then you may want to not take the statue down. That's ridiculous. You may want to have a plaque there that explains both the good and the bad of such a person. That way the heritage is protected and the, uh, the history is taught properly. So before I show you the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, which I am going to show you, and uh, before I go ahead and show you the hat, which I'm going to show you, I want to I want to point out a few things about Christopher Columbus that many people did not know. I'd already mentioned, and you can get more on this from the Trinity Gospel Temple website from Brother Dave. Um, he had spoken in great detail about the, the, the Columbus's drive, the, an undying drive to bring the the word, as it were, to indigenous people and people that did not know. Now that's common. That's part of the Great Commission. That's been done quite a bit, but I'm just getting this ready here. But to imply that he came here to kill and to slaughter and on and on and on, it's just, it's just ridiculous. So I've got everything ready to go here. I'm going to show you the picture. Let's get to these facts real quick. It's from a Christian today. Um, Christopher Columbus did not sail to prove that the Earth was round. And that is absolutely untrue. Columbus estimated the size of the Atlantic Ocean partially from reading the Bible. He had read the second book of Esdras, the Apographa, that God created the world in seven parts, six of them dry land and the seventh water. He thus calculated that the ocean separating Portugal from Japan was one-seventh of the Earth's circumference, or about 2,400 miles. He figured that by sailing 100 miles per day, he could reach the West, the, the Indies in 30 days. Unlike many sailors then and now, Christopher Columbus also never used profanity. So, just a couple random, I didn't mean they wrote that badly, they weren't linked. Uh, think about that. The man who is responsible for sailing today, okay, if he had been a, 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 a minority, they would still be talking about what he brought here. During Columbus's voyages, the ship's crews observed religious rites. Every time they turned the half hourglass, which was their primary means of timekeeping, they cried, Blessed be the hour of the Savior's birth, blessed be the Virgin Mary who bore him, and blessed, blessed be John who baptized him. They finished each day by singing Vespers together, although they reportedly sang out of tune. So they celebrated even when exhausted, sailing across the ocean trying to land in a new area. Not until the third voyage did Columbus actually land on the American mainland, seeing four rivers flowing from a landmass he believed he had encountered the Garden of Eden. He died in 1506, unaware that he had landed thousands of miles away from the Orient. So the idea that he was against these indigenous peoples because of based on who they were, he didn't even know who they were. Irish and French Catholics have argued that Columbus, who brought the Christian faith from to half of the world, should not be named a saint. Though the move had the approval of the Pope, who reigned from 1846 to 1878, he was never canonized because he had an illegitimate kid and he never performed a miracle. He sent 15,585 missionaries to the New World. Missionaries, people that actually helped and made life better, not that made it worse. So here, friends, I'm going to show you real quick the dunce cap of the month, which is being sent to them. And I'm going to show you the award. My ships, those aren't bad ships. I'm kind of proud of that. Um, I may be hopelessly lost, but I'm no killer. And again, I mean, think about that. The, the Catholic Church does not go along giving somebody sainthood who was a butcher. Okay, that doesn't happen. So that's a more proof that this whole, this whole idea of slandering Columbus is based firmly in fiction. He was kind to us. There is a picture of an Indian. And, uh, hey, Columbus was almost a saint. And there is my, my, uh, pat, my priest that I drew. Of course, it says dunce. 
And now I am going to go ahead and hit screen share so that you guys can see the actual award here on YouTube. And then I'm going to show it to others. It says the dunce cap of the month. This dunce cap of the month goes to spokesman Robin Davis and Doltish Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther for not celebrating Columbus Day with great pride. While no human is flawless, I wrote, including the city's namesake, the to judge his legacy based only on his flaws through the lens of PC America is the height of folly. History has shown Christopher Columbus to have been a man of God, a brave sailor, and while lost, quite steadfast. For sailing, for failing to see that, I'm sorry, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Now, I'm going to go ahead, I, I will have to post it on my Facebook page on this link as I will. Facebook people can see it there. And friends, that is the correct views. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for donating, which you can begin do at the correct views at hotmail.com. Donate through PayPal. Um, donate, please. Uh, it's a huge help. Every time it's been done, I put the money towards a better show. And as Ma Melissa Ricciardi can tell you, a better show is uh, something that needs to be supported by you guys. Because unfortunately, YouTube and Facebook and Google and all of them have turned their back on us. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for listening.